All right, it's recording. Um, good morning. Today is uh, March 13th, 2022. Uh, I have two guests with me today. I have uh, Christy Cato and I have Larry Cato. Good morning. And uh, I want to jump into these uh, COVID numbers real quick before we get into the interview. So uh, the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitations, they stand at 386 cases of COVID still. They've released 1,207 inmates with active COVID in their system. The culpable homicide rate still stands at 251 inmates that have been murdered at the hands of the California Department of Incorrections. Uh, the 14-day trend stands at 660, and the total number of inmates that have been affected is 73,043 inmates. Uh, Corcoran stands at 119 inmates infected with COVID, and it keeps going up, so be aware of that because there might be a new spike. Uh, Mule Creek State Prison stands at 38 inmates infected with COVID. California Men's uh, Colony stands at 33. Susanville stands at 30. Uh, Kern Valley State Prison stands at uh, 28. And San Quentin is at zero. Um, I want to just say that you need to be aware of what's going on and don't just listen to these numbers because I, like I keep telling you, I've never met anybody that's going to tell you about the bad they do and how to find it and how to convict them or make them be in trouble. So do your research and, you know, tap in with your loved ones. Let them call you. Let them write you a letter. And like I always say, and now you can see me, I will put information on here where you can contact me. If you need information, if you need paper, pen, pencil, stamp, whatever you need to be able to contact your loved one, you can call me. You can write me. You can send me an email. I will incur the cost. That's how serious I am. I will incur the cost for you to be able to contact your loved one. So if you need money put on your phone, contact me and you'll see that I'm going to keep my word. If you want stamps, contact me. I'm going to give you the stamps because it's important that you contact your loved ones. I'm not telling you to send packages. I'm not telling you that you need to put money on their books. That'll be of your own volition. But um, I am saying that you need to contact your loved ones. All right. Now we're going to get into this interview. Um uh, Good morning, Christy. Good morning, Larry. Good, Good morning, morning, Larry. Um, first of all, how y'all doing today? Doing pretty good. Yeah, doing good. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. We're here today to talk about uh, Ashley Morgan, which is their daughter, and the injustices that took her to prison. And we're going to speak out against them. Uh, we're going to revisit a lot of different things that we may ar have already spoke about. But now you get to see the people that are speaking and you get to engage with them and you'll be able to make comments and leave comments, I should say, because this one's not live. But you'll be able to leave comments and they'll be able to see them and they'll be able to interact with you later on down the line. So um, if you would, uh, could you tell me uh, just a, a brief rundown of what happened with Ashley? Well, on um, in June of 2020, she her daughter who at the time was 14 came to her and uh let her know that a man who we had known for quite like five or six years had touched her inappropriately and made some inappropriate sexual gestures towards her well my daughter you know contacted the man and um he told her hey come let's talk about this so my daughter and her boyfriend, John Kite, and um, her daughter, Brooklyn, and Brooklyn's friends get in the car. They go over to this guy's tattoo shop, and this guy opens fire on them. Um, John returned fire, saving their lives. Thank God. Thank you, John. Um, and long story short, uh, they were arrested. And the guy that shot at them was never arrested when it was clearly self-defense, but he was never arrested. He was never arrested for molest in Brooklyn or any of the other girls that he did it to and is still doing it to. Um, yeah, so she's sitting in prison with uh, attempted murder charges. John's sitting in prison with attempted murder charges. And this is where we're at. Um. So... I have a couple questions. So the individual that we're speaking of that was a part of this incident, his name is uh, Christopher Vincent. Vincent, Correct. right? V-I-N-S-O-N. Correct. Correct. And um, I'm putting his name out there. His name is Christopher Vincent. Um, so the, so my thing is, was it, wasn't he an ex-felon himself? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. 
Um, so, and being an ex felon, so this man had a weapon in his possession that was registered in one of his family members' names. Right. Yeah. He said it was his brother's, which okay. he, at first he lied about the whole, I mean, he told so many lies about it that it was hilarious. But at one point he said that, um, John had two guns and dropped one and he picked it up and used you know what used it against john another version he told that chad who was a 16 year old male that was brooklyn's friend said that chad came at him and he wrestled chad and took the gun from him and used it uh, he told so many different versions and then i guess he finally told the truth that it was his brother's <laughs> yeah once they run the numbers on the gun because they found the gun on <laughs> his property where he hid it in a pump shed with blood all over it and they uh, run the numbers and the numbers come back to his brothers yeah so then when they did the ballistics did the, the number check and then it comes back to his brother so then my thing is this right because me personally um i got arrested in oregon with a gun that was registered in my wife's name and they charged my wife <laughs> oh they, wow which is the law though so yeah. i'm still curious as to why they haven't come and given him any type of charges how come he hasn't got ex felon in possession of a gun um, and how he was able to obviously get stand your ground, but John didn't get stand your ground, you know? Yeah, um, the, he's uh, admittedly in court that he works for the sheriff's department as a paid informant for the sheriff's department. He sells drugs out of his uh, place of business all night long and the sheriff's department knows this they sit around the corner to protect him that's crazy because that's the, yeah. that's the only thing i can envision if, if if they know and they're doing nothing it's like a scene out of uh the movie in the heat of the night where you know you got the small cop you know small town few cops man right. instead of doing their job they figure out how to get in and make some money off of the illicit activities that are going on that's mm -hmm. Nassau um, County for you. Yep, it is definitely a good old boy county. <laughs> so now I have another question. So now, if I, if I'm listening correct, so then Christopher basically not basically, and this is completely wrong. We know this. So he molested your grandbaby, and then your daughter was going to figure out what was happening. They pull up to the scene, and obviously, I mean, my 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 take of this thing is he called them there to lay and wait on them. Mm -hmm. right. The way that I, I, I've seen it from just the interview that we did prior. And so they pull up, you get out the car and no words or nothing to exchange. You, she assumes he's putting the dog in the house and then he comes back out and it just becomes World War Three. And as you said, luckily, John had a weapon to defend everybody else because he was firing at the children. Right. Yes. yes. Trying to silence the children, trying to silence Brooklyn. Yeah, because because Brooklyn is really the person who had all the evidence against him because she is the person that he violated, he molested, and then she had been around him. And then he also gave her a tattoo, which is illegal. Right. Yep. On her bottom lip. Yeah, inside of it. it does she still have the, 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 the mark? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then so that that's like evidence. And I'm not understanding how he's not been charged with contributing with the delin to the delinquency of a minor how he's not been charged with molestation. Molestation isn't always just about a sexual act. Right. When he touched her lip without her parents' permission and he did that tattoo, he molested her. And right. then right. you've taken advantage of just rights and, and everything. And, but Ashley's sitting in jail and John is in jail. And then this dude, Chris Vinson is still out doing the same putrid bullshit acts that he has been doing. Right. Well, the state's attorney they told the only way that they would charge him is if someone had a video of him doing these things. One by someone, one of these young girls. That one of these young girls had a video. Because there were three or four uh, girls other than Brooklyn that went forward, talked to detectives, said he's, and one of them he had had full sexual intercourse yeah, all the way sex. And they so, all went forward. And that's what I was told that if any of them have a video or, or pictures of it happening, then they would check into it again and that that that's so this is uh nassau county yeah florida nassau county florida yeah yeah that that says a lot that i mean that says a lot about the county not not a bad thing but a bad thing about the law enforcement because uh i mean i have a daughter my daughter's 14 i have a daughter that's 15 and i have a daughter that's about to be 18 and uh 
I mean, I, I would go crazy. We're going to leave that one alone. But, yeah. um, <laughs> exactly. But uh, it Something just. I, I want to add in that uh, I haven't even thought to tell you before because there's so yes. much to this. But um, we allegedly, and it never came out on record, but we were told that there were also two other guys that Chris had waiting, like hiding over by the dumpster or something that were supposed to, to shoot, shoot the, and kill John when they arrived. Shoot the kids and John when they pulled up. But those guys, I guess, got scared or whatever. But thank God they didn't. Well, yeah, hopefully hopefully it was just they got some rationale or whatever it was because, I mean, but that just that just goes to show his character and what type of person he is. I mean, we already know his character when you're sitting around here and you're preying on some little girl. I mean, right. um, if you're into that type of body frame get you a grown skinny woman i mean because i remember right. your description when you told me you know brooklyn was 13 and she was built like a 13 year old so right that just leads me to believe a little girl with puppy dog ponytails or something you know yeah. right. and but like i was going to say about the police department and the sheriff or whoever out there did the investigation first of all uh they let you and that whole community down i mean there's no other way to call it because mm -hmm. At least go do an investigation. If you feel like this man is being slandered, and even if you're supporting this man or whatever illegal activities that he has going, you should at least cover your ass. Because now a person like me and everybody else that's listening, we're going to start doing our research and we're going to want to know what the hell's going on. Because how is this man accused of molesting a 13 year old minor and then you do nothing about it? And then you tell the minor or all everybody involved, well, do you have video? Do you have camera footage? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so first of all, then that would imply that they knew that this was going to happen when they got there. So we know that's stupid. Right. And then two, who thinks to pull out the phone when you got this dude pulling up on you and he's trying to touch you or whatever. And then as a child, you can be confused and you might participate, which is still not a child participating because right. their mind is fragile. Right. And then they say you must have footage. Yeah. Who, who the fuck trained them? How did they get become peace officers? You know? Right. Um, and excuse my French because I, I, I get I get emotional. I'm sorry. But um it's like uh the times that we live in, I mean, and I guess it's just a testament to all the wrong and the bad that is going on in this world, but I mean it takes people like you, me, and there's so many more people that are good out there to stamp it out and bring awareness and bring attention. And uh this is what we're doing right now. Um I have another question. So now, we're at the situation to where uh, the situation has happened. Your daughter and them have got back in the car, luckily, and they were able to leave the scene. And uh, Chris was shot. And I mean, I'm not an advocate of violence. I mean, but he brought it upon himself. So you came out shooting at people and somebody returned fire to you to, to defend Brooklyn and I believe the other little boy's name was Chad, right? And then so another it, girl named Bree was with him. Yeah, so it was Brooklyn, Bree, Chad, uh, uh, Ashley, and then John. Mm -hmm. So John was defending five people. And right. unfortunately, he got 30 years for that. And then I'm going to make sure this week that I contact his mama so we can figure out how to get that journey started to try to get that 30 years up off him. Yep. You know, we know he, 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 he may be guilty of being an ex-felon having a gun. He may be guilty of discharging that firearm. But he can't be given attempted murder for defending himself when you have a law out there that says I can defend myself. And then as yeah. Ashley pointed out, because Ashley needs she's gonna come home and be a great lawyer. Yes, yes. Great is. Is before yes. Ashley. I already know this because when she said the things that she said to me, that's what sparked me and gave me the goosebumps to say I need to contact John because she said she had did all that work and then told him, Don't give up. She was passionate when she said it in her interview. Yeah, don't right. give up. These these are the things that you need to be doing. And then I get it because John is a man. So unfortunately, and that's probably one of the reasons why he hasn't just already reached out because in men prisons, and I'm a man that's been to a man's prison, the rules are totally different. You know, it's kind of hard to be able to speak out against the injustices against you because we, we, we unfortunately make rules that make it to where we can't help ourselves in prison. You know, all that. You can't say nothing against the police, but the police just says something against you. Why can't you defend yourself? So right. I'm going to try to convince him that, you know, hey, uh, there's a better way to go about doing things instead of letting yourself sit in prison for how much time you got to do off that 30 years. Um, 
But my my, my question is, um, since she's been there, we're going to turn the interview back to about you two. Since she's been there, I know that you had to, you know, be the good grandparents that you are and the good people that you are just in general. And you took in your grandbabies. No question. No, no, nothing. There was never a doubt in your mind that your grandbabies was going to be staying with you at your house, you know, because that's what good people do, you know. And definitely I know and now the world will know you are good people. And um, how has that, you know, changed the daily in and outs of your life? I mean, I know it's a good thing, but how has it changed it? <clears throat> well, it went from, you know, just us and kind of doing what we want when we want to whoa, we're back to, you know, we've got kids, we've got schedules, we've got ball practice, church that, you know, you're running yeah. around there and dealing with them getting into arguments, you know, it's back to, back to that, the thing that you thought you were done with, because now we're grandparents, but, yeah, you know, and, and we wouldn't have it any other way, I wouldn't have them anywhere else, but it's yeah. definitely, you know, it's not ideal, it, considering the fact that their mama should be home taking care of them, because that's what she wants, but... That's and good. I mean, and like I said, I, once again, I got to just say, you know, thank you for being good people, because some people and honestly, I, honestly, I've done a lot of research. Most people in this situation, unfortunately, they think about themselves and the financial stress and the mental stress. And then, like you said, having the, the freedoms that you had to be able to do whatever you want, whatever you want. And you didn't have to think about the kids because they were just your grandkids at that time. Mm -hmm. Now you've stepped over into the role of I'm still grandma, but now I got to be, you know, mom, I'm a surrogate mother and you're a surrogate father to the kids until mama comes home to get her kids. Right. And, but that's what's supposed to happen because it's supposed to be unconditional and the family support is supposed to be there because you're not saying that the situation couldn't have been done different or maybe it could have transpired different. You're saying that one, she's illegally sentenced for things that shouldn't have uh, happened. And then two, you're saying, and now that she's there, I'm a supporter because that's what's supposed to happen, especially if you want to see change in a person. Mm -hmm. And right. you already knew that she was going to school to for a profession. She was working. And then even though Ashley got incarcerated and even though they drug her down and she's been sitting in there for some years now, she has not stopped making her mind grow. She has not stopped letting her heart grow. That's and, right. you know, I know for a fact because I can just hear it in her conversation and the things that she's done in there that uh, she's grown. And I can't wait till she comes home. That way me and her can do this together and attack this stuff together, you know, mm -hmm. and then she can grow her own platform too, to where people can hear her voice and people can understand that. Ha ha. You messed up when you locked up Ashley Morgan, yeah. you know, <laughs> and they have because Ashley is very intelligent. Yeah. Yes. And she's a fighter. She's always been a fighter. She's fought for these kids all this time, and now they've been snatched from her, and she's been locked away like an animal that she is not. She yes. was just protecting her cub. Yeah. All of us would have done the same thing if it was your child. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. And, you know, where they messed up is, is Ashley was smarter than her own lawyer. She was calling out, you know, laws and trials and things that, which her lawyer should have been looking up. Yeah. And she brought, had brought it to the judge. Then the judge even tried to do it to her lawyer to tell her lawyer what she needed to do. And Ashley done it for her, you know, cause the lawyer couldn't do it. She didn't know. You know what I mean? It was just, it was crazy. You know what I mean? For some, for lawyers to lie to you and tell, have you thinking loved ones that sit out there and think that, Oh, you have nothing to worry about. You got everything to worry about when your child's charged with attempted murder, yeah. you know, um, because you when you rely on a lawyer, you expect them to do the best that they can do. Then to turn around to find out that, you know, when you're sitting out there and you're sending her messages while the trial's going telling her to object to this, to object to that. Yeah, we were literally texting her yeah. things to say and do during the trial. Yeah, and she wouldn't do it. And then she come out and tell us, well, there's no reason to do it because the judge is going to deny it anyway. Well, at least it shows that you believe in your client. And it's, it's on record. Yeah, well, it's no, on and record. it's on record. That's the most important thing. Yeah, she never objected to nothing. She just sat there and sold her down the river. And it, that's wrong. No, it is. 
No, at the end, because Ashley was so adamant, she did have her object. She, the way she worded it, she said that it would cover everything. I hope she's right. I don't, everything else she said wasn't, but yeah. It's, well, it so she crazy. probably was just, because what, what attorneys would do, and it's the unfortunate, sad part of being arrested, and then you have to, you know, have somebody represent you that doesn't really, so, if you're a public defender and you have 50 people on your case, yeah, that's too many people, first and foremost, right? So I can say they, they are swamped. But then instead of being honest with people, they sell people dreams like they did you. And you guys you guys had a paid attorney, right? Right. right. So, right. And that's even worse. But yep. then when these paid attorneys or public defenders come up against the case, instead of doing the full research, they research stuff as it comes to them. Instead of saying, OK, this is an attempted murder case. Let me look up and see what could be the possible defense. And Ashley went and did that for the attorney. And then the attorney looked at the case and probably felt like, OK, when they were talking to the D.A., oh, we might not be able to win this instead of understanding. No, you can win anything that you put the law to, because that's what the law is there for. Mm -hmm. And then instead of her being honest with you. Or, the, or I don't know if it was a man or a woman. I was it a woman? Woman, yes. yeah. Okay, instead of her being honest with you both and Ashley and saying, hey, look, it's not going to go well, so I'm going to set it up to where she has an appeal. That's what she did. That's why she kept making the mistakes on purpose because once an attorney sees that they're not as good as the attorney across the, the table from them, a lot of the times they set it up to where it's a constructive case for you to have an active appeal on IAC, which is ineffective assistance of counsel. Mm -hmm. But the bad thing about that is that when you get afforded that right, the judge is still going to look at what the prosecutor said and still not grant it because your attorney didn't do what they were supposed to do. And like you're saying, say things that were on the, that needed to be placed on the record, because then when you bring it up, it'll be, oh, it is on the record and it was ignored. And then you get to say, well, this is the point that I was trying to make. And this is why you need to vacate my sentence, mm -hmm. you know. And then unfortunately, uh, like I said, um, attorneys are right up there with a bunch of other bad things and they get caught up about the yes. dollar. Yep. You know? uh, but I mean, you know, we are where we are now. And I mean, regardless of the fact, uh, we're going to make sure that Ashley gets her uh, her justice and you know like we've discussed most likely it will be after she comes home but nevertheless she'll still get her justice and you know and then i already know she's going to come out here and do greatness um so now my question to you is now uh being that now that you 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 have a different taste for the penal system because i'm pretty sure just as a people i knew that you knew mass incarceration was wrong um, and that there are people that are unjustly sentenced because I know that you guys are woke and, you know, and I know that you, you're well uh, versed in just life and the community you live in. Mm -hmm. How do you view the justice system now? How does this situation make you look at the justice system? There is no just. It is, all it is about is money. They do yeah. not care about people's lives. They don't care about rehabilitating people. All they care about is money. And then once you're in the so-called justice system, you're never going to get out because they're going to tr do everything in their power to make it where you fail at probation or parole so that you go back because they get more money. Yes, that is true. And I mean, and it's sad that uh, in this country where we're the superpower, right? I mean, everybody knows about America, even those countries who smile in our face and we know they really don't like us. How in this country, though, to be the superpower, can we not get our shit together, especially in the penal systems? Right. Uh, it's like you're we're and you, and you and you set a trend, though, because this is the thing. Even those who break the law and deserve to be there and they need to be there for a long time while they're there, when they see you're breaking the law and you're not doing the shit you're supposed to, they feel like they're just in what they do. They feel like, OK, well, the crooks are watching the crooks. So when I get back out, I'm going to go be a crook. I'm just going to learn to be a better criminal, you know, mm -hmm. instead yeah. of learning to to get in touch with God. And 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 some get in touch with God like I did. And, and I'm going to be honest, I got in touch with God a long time ago. You know, my mother's yeah. an Eastern star. She's a female Mason. And she told me never be a part of that. Get into the Bible. 
you know, basic instructions before you leave earth, you know? And so I found God, but I learned to be a better crook before I really came and I stopped straddling the fence. And mm -hmm. it's like, they don't understand the perpetual system that they've created and the people that they are creating in there, you know? And until we change the system, we always have to worry about who's gonna be the next person that comes out there with mental issues. And he is the next parkland shooter, you know? Right. And, right. and these are not issues that I won't even speak on, but this is stuff that we need to address. Who's gonna be the next school shooter? Who's gonna be the next guy to go into the mall that has mental issues and he shoots up the mall. And the only thing you're gonna say is, and see, he's the next felon, we gotta change gun laws. Huh? Yeah. yeah. What, what does that have to do with anything? I'm a felon, right? I've never went to a store to get a gun. <laughs> never. Yeah. And every crime that I've in, had has involved a weapon. So it's yeah. like, that's not what you need to do. You need to change the way you treat people and you need to really get involved and, and see what's going on and see the interminglings and makings of a man like me, a man like Larry, a, a woman like Christy. You have to figure out what's going on with a person so you can help them and address the situation instead of, what Congress does, they get all this money, they throw it at a situation, but you never see the results because the money got thrown at the situation and went right past it. Yeah. Into <laughs> yeah. somebody else's pocket. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, uh, if there's anything that you want to say, I'm going to give you this moment right now just so you can address America. Uh, you, Larry, whoever wants to speak, or if you both want to speak, go ahead. And uh, I'm going to just step back and listen and let you say what you want to say about your daughter and what you want to say about this case. Okay. I would just like to say, you know, I, it's so easy for people when they don't have anyone that they know close or a loved one who is in jail or in prison. It's really easy for them to just say, oh, well, they shouldn't have did what they did. They're getting what they deserve. You know, but once you have someone that's that you care about, you realize it's not that simple. You know, like you said, maybe some of the people are there because they did a crime, but they still don't deserve to be treated like animals. Yes. You know, treat them like humans. I'm not saying that it shouldn't be a country club. No, they shouldn't have, you know, bonbons and tea time and all that, but they should be treated like decent human beings. I mean, yes. It's ridiculous that their basic human needs are not being met when there's a woman who's big pregnant begging for medical because she's in labor and she's denied medical and has her baby on the bathroom floor with another it. inmate delivering it. <coughs> That's so, I mean, this is horrible, horrible treatment and something's got to change. So and can you speak on that though? So, so the girl was pregnant and they denied her attention. So the inmates had to deliver the baby. Yep. Yeah. The, another the inmate delivered this girl's baby on the bathroom floor. The baby's cord was around its neck like three times. So it was born blue, not breathing. Yeah. And I guess, you know, they got it. Okay. But the baby did have problems. I don't know that exactly what, but I mean, that's so, like, and it's like those, those officers are just, um, taught to just ignore the inmates. They don't care, yeah. you know, elderly. And this has came from, uh, my son was incarcerated. He saw this too. Elderly people who have dementia, who are being treated like dog crap because they don't understand. They can't remember what they're supposed to be doing or not doing. And these guards are just horrible to them. Um, my son saw a handicapped young man who um, had a walker and he had just gotten transferred to another prison. They took his walker from him and told him he didn't have, I guess you're supposed to have a special tag or something. To have yeah. It. Yeah. He's supposed to have a chrono. Yeah. And he didn't have it for that prison yet. Cause he had just gotten there like the day before. And I mean, just think like, why? I don't understand. <coughs> why is it okay? Like, it, well, back to the thing with the elderly. If you're out here in society and you treat an elderly person wrong and you, you know, you hit them, you, you deny them food, you don't give them the diapers they need and have them wet their self and oh, well, stay in it. What would happen? That's get elder abuse. For elder That's abuse. Elder right? abuse. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, ma'am. But it's okay for the sheriff's department to do it. Yeah. Or the, the officers in the prison. You know, prison, it, it, yeah. it's just, Charge. it's crazy how messed up and backwards it is. And 
I, I could go on and on about that. I'm so passionate about it. It dry, it just is so wrong. Like I said, I know. And I also know there are some inmates who are, you know, maybe it's mental issues or whatever. They're, they're really rough and they probably would hurt the officers and they have to be careful. But, you know, you still have to treat people as humans. And yes. I, I just don't understand how those officers sleep at night. Uh, I don't know. It's crazy. And there is people in the prison system, whether you have someone there or not, there is people that not only are innocent and serving time, but even the ones that are guilty, they're vi being violated every day inside yes. of that prison. They're being mistreated. You know, I, a lot of people turn their backs and don't even talk to their kinfolk when they're in prison. And then when they get out, oh, man, I didn't know it was like that. Well, you know, if you reach out and help someone now, you probably they need you to reach out to them. They need you to help them because you can believe they're not getting help inside that prison at all. No, that's that 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 is I mean, everything that y'all said is spot on. It's the facts. I mean, um, a lot of people think also, too, that when we speak out against, you know, corrections and the stuff that they're doing that like we're rogue or something. And I wanted to say this and I'm gonna speak for y'all too. We believe in law and order. You have to have law and order in this country yeah. or you're going to be living in peril. We will be living in a scene out of the movie purge, you know, and yeah. I don't want that. And like I've said before, I have kids, they have their grandkids. She's raising her kids kid right now because of uh, injustice. But with this being said, um, you have to have law to have order. I respect law enforcement. I have law enforcement who lives on my street actually. And we get along perfectly. You have to have law to have order. But when law violates the law and then violates your rights and then so forth and so on, then what do you do? Because the funny thing is you have to go to the law to investigate the law to try to do something. Right. But even that person, that's a righteous person, right? Whether he's internal affairs or whatever he is, he's going to remember that he might get his friend fired. His friend might not be able to pay his rent if he tells the truth. So then personal things come in, mm -hmm. you know, because that's like uh, I'm loyal to a fault. And if my friend was in trouble, I probably would deceive people to try to protect him. But then also, if you're a righteous person, right, you're supposed to tell the truth no matter what. Amen. So then you have to say, no, nah, I can't deceive no matter what. I just got to tell my friend, you know what? Bro, you made a mistake. I support you because you're my friend, but I don't support your actions and I need to report you. And this is not happening on a daily basis inside of every county jail, inside of every institution across of America. And then it's even worse in other countries. But in our country, it's not happening. Nobody's really speaking up. The ones who do speak up, they get harassed. They get death threats. And it's only it's so few and far in between. And they forget, you know, like Larry said, um, I, it doesn't matter whether you were guilty of your crime or not. There are a lot of innocent people in prison, but it doesn't matter. You're still supposed to be afforded the right of being treated as a person. And we all were given human rights. We all were given civil rights by the Constitution and just as people in general. And when you violate those, um, it, it's wrong. And uh, we'll do another interview, but I do want to speak to this. It's kind of like um, the pictures that I have that you sent me of your daughter when she was assaulted um that makes me upset because you have these officers right and they get their training and like i said they have to have this training because there are violent people in there i have been a violent person and i, I felt i was righteous for my violence that i did because the officers were abusing us so we attacked the officers in turn but um, it wasn't the right way to handle things, but that was the only way to get stuff seen because, of, of course, we are the voiceless. Yeah. But um, when you're up in there and they train them to have a superiority complex and every time they come across you, they're told in their training that you, the inmate, the convict, the prisoner is supposed to have an inferiority complex. So when you come across a person that's always supposed to be dumbed down or, you know, always supposed to bow or like in the movie, The Planet of the Apes, you know, they would always go like this. That's what they're expecting an inmate to do. They're expecting the inmate to walk up to them like they're Caesar and we're asking for permission every time, right. you know, and when you don't, then you get abused. 
you get treated wrong, they tear up your cell, they destroy your pictures, your mail comes up missing, or like in Ashley's case, you, you're speaking up and you're speaking out for yourself and then the officer pepper sprays you, abuses you, slams you, slangs you, and then punches you repeatedly, and then you got bruises, and then her, like me, I accept it because then it's more drama for us inside of there to even say anything. Right. When you make those reports or you go to different situations, of reporting things, what happens is the inmate gets taken to the hole like the inmate has done something wrong. Yeah. And they claim yeah, it's exactly for your right. protection when all they have to do is tell the officer to leave you alone. If Why do you need to protect me from an officer who took an oath right. to not hurt me? And to, you know, yeah. so these are the things that make an inmate say, I'm good. It makes people not speak out, but it also makes you have a cold, hard heart towards the people that are turning them keys, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and with that being said, uh, I want to say thank you. Uh, I do appreciate it. And like, you know, I mean, we have our own personal connection. So, I mean, I appreciate you stepping in here and especially Larry, because Larry's like me. We don't like doing this social media stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we got to get out of our comfort zone. Exactly. <laughs> so, definitely I do. mean, this is my second video. I don't know if you've seen the first one I put out. This is my second one. Um, and I'm gonna keep doing them. And then, you know, as court, of course, I'm gonna keep in contact with you guys and we're gonna bring attention to Ashley's story and every other story that's going on in her institution and all the institutions that we can try to bring awareness to. And, uh, like I always say, this is just the beginning. This is just the start of something good and God working through us to get the word out there and to show people that, you know, anybody can work together. It doesn't matter about political beliefs. It doesn't matter about whatever your beliefs are. As a person, when you got blood running through your vein and oxygen going in your lungs, and it's all the same that you may have just breathed out, right? Your exhale may have been my inhale. Right. You know? right. So we all connected. That's all I'm trying to say. That's right. We all are connected. And, you know, you're my brother. She's my sister. And I appreciate you. And I thank you for coming into my life. And I thank you for all the advice that you have given me. You have given me some very, very important advice on days where I was struggling and I was like, you know what? I'm going to not do this. And if I do, I'm not going to do it for a while. So I thank you. I do thank you. Yeah, we appreciate you and what you do. And the we help do. that you give us, Larry, because, you know, you, you give a lot of help too, man. You're doing a lot of good work too. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to end this. Well, I'm going to end the broadcast right now.